Massage is the oldest and easiest natural form of healing. It is based on touch, a natural gesture of giving and receiving, essential for the balanced flow of life energies and thus for overall health. Self-massage is the age-old body language we are all born with. Healing massage techniques have developed in all traditional cultures of the East, from Egypt, India and Arabia to China and Japan. Later, that knowledge came to the West, where it was first used by Greek doctors. Because of its positive and healing effects, massage was highly valued and it has been in constant use ever since. Massage involves the systematic rubbing, kneading or grasping of soft tissues in order to achieve complete relaxation and invigoration of the body and spirit. Massage relieves tension, eases pain, soothes, invigorates and stimulates a tired or sleepy body, thus bringing preventative and therapeutic effects. Many people tend to regard self-massage as a substitute measure. You massage yourself merely because there was no one around to do it. This may be true, but remember, no one knows your body and moods as well as you do yourself. With regular self-massage, you will become more vital, focused, effective, and resistant to harmful external influences. Self-massage will invigorate and relax your body and help you to seize the day. This self-massage video program was designed by Edvin Dervishevich, PhD, a well-known expert in the fields of Tui Na massage, acupuncture and homeopathy. He started his extensive scientific career at the Academy of Traditional Medicine in Beijing, China. Later, he was employed as the first non-Chinese lecturer at Anhui University. His work is widely recognized in Europe and in the Far East, where he is a highly sought-after speaker at many international symposiums. Our self-massage techniques are simple and easy to learn and as such adaptable to your needs and time. Because they are so straightforward, you can use them anywhere and anytime, at home, at work, in nature or while traveling. Self-massage affects the physical and spiritual plane of feelings. Before starting self-massage, prepare a comfortable and warm place. Wash your hands and face with cold water, not only to cleanse, but also to sharpen your senses. Sit down in a comfortable position and focus your mind on breathing to calm yourself. When ready, begin with the self-massage. The hands. Self-massage is more effective if you warm up your hands first. As with any physical effort, warm muscles may help prevent injuries, in this case injuries of the ligaments and tendons due to strain and fatigue. Start the warm-up by rubbing your hands against each other in all directions.
Massaging the palms and fingers affects other parts of the body and all internal organs. Like the foot and the ear, the palm and fingers are covered with many sensitive acupressure points. Massage along the meridian lines. On the palm there are three yin meridians and on the back of the hand there are three yang meridians. The lung yin meridian runs along the palm side of the thumb. The large intestine yang meridian runs along the back side of the index finger. The pericardium yin meridian runs along the palm side of the middle finger. The Sun Jiao Yang Meridian runs along the back side of the ring finger. The Heart Yin Meridian runs along the palm side of the little finger, and the Small Intestine Yang Meridian along the back side of the little finger. On the back side of the hand, you should concentrate on the spaces between the bones. Massaging here is beneficial to the joints and blood circulation. Massaging the little finger improves concentration, mind, memory, thoughts, and consciousness. Massaging the ring finger is beneficial to the urinary tract and genital organs. Massaging the middle finger helps with psychological and sexual problems and prevents allergies. Massaging the index finger affects the intestines and the nervous system tissues. Massaging the thumb affects the lungs, throat and lymphatic system. All of the meridians which pass through the hand start or end at the fingertips. Massage each finger thoroughly and finally pull the tips to further stimulate the meridians. Massaging the heart line helps with breathing problems and illnesses of the chest. Conclude the palm massage by pinching the end of the heart line at the small intestine 3 acupressure point, which is crucial in the alleviation of pain in the back and the spine. The arms. Massage larger areas with long flowing strokes. Use a combination of various techniques. Diversity provides for a better massage and also keeps the arms from getting too tired.
The first technique is rubbing with the palm. Keep the fingers together. Direct the pressure through the heel of the hand. The second technique is rubbing with an extended thumb. It is important to keep the thumb at a right angle to the direction of the stroke while keeping the other fingers in a fist. The third technique is called ironing. As the name suggests, the lower side of the fist is used. On the inside of the arm there are yin meridians which should be massaged gently. This will have positive effects on the internal organs. On the outside of the arm there are yang meridians. Massage there more thoroughly to dissipate negative energies accumulated by the stress of modern living. It's time to begin the stimulation of the acupressure points. Let's begin with the first point. The heart seven point, also known as Shen Men, or the divine door, is found on the inner lower side of the wrist in line with the little finger. Acupressure alleviates fatigue, insomnia, and helps with depression and heart problems. The pericardium six point is three middle finger widths from the wrist in the middle of the inner side of the lower arm. Acupressure improves concentration, alleviates insomnia and vomiting, and calms the heart. Chinese medicine regards this point as one of the most effective relaxation points. The Sun Jiao six point is on the opposite side of the lower arm, four finger widths from the wrist, in the depression between the tendons. If you can feel the soft tissue, you have found the point. Press for at least 30 seconds. This point is very useful for alleviating headaches in the temple area. The large intestine 11 point is found on the outer side of the elbow at the top of the fold which appears when you bend the elbow. This is the best homeostatic point on the body and is responsible for balancing energies. It can also ease elbow pains and lowers blood pressure. The heart 3 point lies opposite the large intestine 11 point on the inner side of the elbow at the top of the fold which appears when you bend the elbow. This is the point which stimulates the release of serotonin, the happiness hormone. Acupressure here is particularly welcome when you're feeling down. You can also use palms for stimulation. Conclude the self-massage of the arms with the air cushion stroke, that is, by beating with cupped palms. When done right, the air cushion produces a characteristic hollow sound. This technique improves circulation in the arms, removes energy blocks, prevents the formation of hematoma and atrophies, and relieves general fatigue. Repeat air cushion beating several times during the self-massage, especially when you feel that your arms are tired. The head. In the morning, our senses are half asleep. Self-massage of the head is the best way to awaken them. First, activate the brain. Place your thumbs on your temples and your fingers on your eyebrows. Begin massaging toward the top of the head, at first only with the fingers, then adding the palms. The fingers of both hands will meet at the back of the head. 
continue massaging down the spine down to the bulge just under the neck. Return by way of the ears and the eyebrows. Drumming on the skull with the fists positively influences your well-being, improves blood flow and breaks down fats, thus diminishing the possibility of a stroke. It is also very effective against headaches. It should be performed at least three times every day. The point gallbladder 20 lies in the depression below the convex at the back of the skull at the top of the nape. The Chinese believe that humans used to have horns, which later became stunted. Find the location and strongly massage the points. Acupressure suppresses cold, dampness, wind and heat, all exogenous pathogenic factors which cause tiredness, headache and dizziness. Stimulation of the gallbladder meridian strengthens willpower and determination. Rubbing the entire face with downward and outward motions improves blood circulation of the facial muscles. With regular massage, you will begin to notice improvements in your facial gestures. The meridians of the stomach, large and small intestines, and gallbladder run across the face. Firm motions in a downwards direction improve digestion and stimulate peristalsis, making this point an ideal weapon in the fight against obesity. At the temples, there is an effective acupressure point for treating headaches and migraines. Regular massage strengthens willpower and balances the hormones. It is interesting to note that when the Bedouin women of northern Africa have a headache, they place a slice of lemon on their temples and cover the temples and forehead with a scarf. We see that Gregor is massaging not only the temples but also the surrounding area. There is nothing wrong with this. In this way, we stimulate the surrounding acupressure points as well as the main acupressure point, thus achieving a greater effect. The eyes. In Chinese medicine, liver illnesses reflect in the eyes, and problems with the eyes manifest in the liver. Therefore, massaging the eyes benefits the liver. You will learn many eye massaging techniques. They all improve eyesight and concentration and make the eyes wider and clearer. The first technique is kneading around the eyeballs while applying gentle pressure on the eyeballs themselves. This will strengthen the eye muscles. Next, start pulling the eyelids. This will open the eyes more widely. This kind of pulling is especially beneficial to people who look sleepy or have lazy eyelids. Next, place your thumbs on the temples and pull over the eyes outwards with the knuckles of your index fingers. Repeat the same motion, but this time over the eyebrows. Next, thoroughly knead and stretch the eyebrows. There are three acupressure points on the eyebrows, one at the beginning close to the nose, another in the middle, and the last at the outer end of the eyebrow. At the base of the nose, near the eyes, there are two acupressure points, bladder one and two. With these two points, we treat headaches, migraines, and problems with sinuses and eyes. 
The third eye point is located at the center of the space between the eyebrows. Massaging improves concentration, treats sinus inflammations, insomnia, and headaches in the area of the forehead and temples. The nose. In traditional Chinese medicine, the nose is connected with the lungs, therefore massaging the nose, in addition to local healing effects, has a positive influence on the respiratory passages and also treats lung disorders. Alternately rubbing the nose with stretched index fingers improves the blood circulation of both nostrils. At the same time, it stimulates the acupressure points located at the top and at the base of the nose. This motion accentuates and opens the respiratory passages during exhalation through the nose. Place the backside of the thumbs next to each other on the forehead, just above the root of the nose. Drag them in a downwards direction along the nose and move them apart at the end allowing the air to move more freely. This massage has a cosmetic effect as well, since it smooths wrinkles. The large intestine 20 point lies in the depression just next to the nostril. Acupressure balances the hormones, treats flu, and improves the health of the respiratory passages, especially of the upper part. The Du 26 point is reanimation point. For example, you should immediately press an unconscious person at this point. Even though it may cause pain, you can use your fingernails to increase the effect. The mouth. Let's move on to the lips. In traditional Chinese medicine, the lips are connected to the spleen, so spleen disorders are visible on the lips and vice versa. In traditional Chinese medicine, the tip of the tongue is connected with the heart. When kissing, the tongue expresses the heart and not the thoughts. During the kiss, the eye should be closed. A person who kisses with open eyes is said to be a liar. The stomach meridian, related to the spleen, runs on the side of the lips. The Chinese say the stomach transforms food and that the spleen transports it throughout the body. Logically, massaging around the lips has a positive effect on digestion. Press the tip of the tongue to the roof of the mouth. The pressure calms and clears the consciousness. the ears. The ears are connected with the kidney meridian, which means that hearing disorders will show up as kidney dysfunctions and vice versa. Warm the ears well by kneading thoroughly with the palms and fingers to prepare them for the massage. The area of the earlobes where earrings are worn is connected with the liver and the eyes. Some say pirates wore earrings to improve their eyesight at night. It is also known that women have better eyesight than men, maybe because they wear earrings. And according to traditional Chinese medicine, massaging the earlobes soothes allergies. Massage the outer ear to treat the spine or muscle spasms.
Massaging the tip of the ear treats dust, sun, and other allergies. This point can also be used to heal acne. A triangular dimple is just under the tip of the ear. Here is the soothing acupressure point called Shen Men. Use it when someone is getting on your nerves. Below the triangular dimple in the middle of the ear, there is a ridge. This is a stomach-related point. Massaging this point is essential for those who wish to lose weight. In front of the ear, there are three acupressure points, small intestine 19, sun jiao 21, and gallbladder 2. These are anti-stress points, which at the same time suppress hunger. It can also be used to treat ear illnesses. Insert the index finger into your ear opening. Wait for a second or two and briskly remove the finger. Feel the hearing canal open. This will affect the lungs and consequently skin illnesses. The neck and shoulders. On the neck are points to reduce stress. Massaging the neck and shoulders is highly recommended for people who spend a lot of time sitting down. Massaging here regulates hormonal balance, influences the thyroid gland, and helps regain a lost or weakened voice. Acupressure point REN22 is placed in the throat depression. This so-called asthma point relieves breathing problems. It can also ease or even prevent an asthma attack. Kneading on the backside of the neck boosts immunity, strengthens bones, and treats vertigo. Knocking removes blocks, relaxes knotted muscles, and alleviates pain, thus stimulating energy flow from the spine to the head. A painful neck can be a sign of a weak liver. The liver takes care of the tendons, which on the other hand support the neck. When the liver is ill, the tendons become weak and the neck painful. Therefore, avoid drinking alcohol, eating greasy food, smoking cigarettes, or getting angry. Now start with the shoulder massage. Exert a deep pressure while rubbing with an extended thumb. This will positively affect the gallbladder, treat headaches, and relax the shoulders. Anyone who is stressed and worried should perform this exercise several times a day. Continue with kneading to produce stretching of the shoulder muscles. The massage is strong and deep. Remember, regular shoulder massage may improve the condition of the breasts. The trunk. The Dew 14 point is just below the neck underneath the bulge, that is, the seventh cervical vertebra. Six meridians meet at this point. This point strengthens the immune and respiratory systems and lowers body temperature. 
15 minutes of firm dispersion on the Dew 14 point can lower body temperature by as much as 3 degrees. The back is the hardest part of the body to self-massage since there are some areas which are inaccessible to the hands. Use the knocking and rubbing techniques on the back. Both improve blood circulation and energy flow and thus relax and strengthen the muscles. Put one hand on your belly and circle it clockwise around your navel, tracing the path of the large intestine. If you like, put the other hand on top of the first one to increase the pressure. Massaging the large intestine stimulates peristalsis and thus helps remove waste products from the body. The tiny grains that you can sometimes feel during the massage are the remains of undigested food. It is well known that massaging the large intestine prolongs life. The Ren Meridian, also called the Life Meridian, runs vertically passing through the navel. It affects the fertility of both men and women. Look for the acupressure points that are two, three, and four finger widths under the navel. The Ren 6 point, which is two finger widths below the navel, is a source of vital energy. At the same time, massage the Ren 4 and Ren 3 points, three and four finger widths below the navel. These points treat impotence, urinary incontinence, irregular menstruation, and disorders of the sexual organs. Massage the Ren Meridian in an upwards direction to raise vital energy. The rubbing is fast and vigorous with pressure. Conclude on the chest with a diagonal V-shaped motion towards the shoulders. If you want to know what happens if this meridian is massaged downwards, take a look at the energy experiment in the additional material. The feet. As with any other part of the body, warm the feet up first, thus increasing circulation and reducing swelling and oedema. Rubbing the soles invigorates the mind and strengthens the kidneys. The liver three point lies on the top side of the foot in the depression precisely at the place where the bones of the big and second toe meet. This is a homeostatic point used to treat migraines and headaches, improve eyesight, reduce blood pressure, and dissipate emotional tensions like anger. The instep is massaged in the same way as the back of the hand. The liver meridian, which controls mood, anger, depression, the menstrual cycle, the tendons, and eyesight runs between the big toe and second toe. The stomach meridian, which controls digestion and general well-being, runs between the second and third toe. The gallbladder meridian, which controls the digestion of fats and willpower, runs between the third and fourth toe.
The bladder meridian, which controls the kidneys and urinary channels, runs between the fourth and fifth toe. The kidney one point lies on the sole, on the line between the red and the white skin between the first and the second toe. This point controls sleep and appetite, reduces weakness in the body, strengthens consciousness, helps with shock, epilepsy and toothaches. If you are feeling tired and sleepy, massage this point vigorously to pick yourself up. Move slowly from the kidney one to the kidney three point passing through the kidney two point situated on the inner edge of the sole. The kidney three point lies on the inner side of the foot between the top of the ankle and the Achilles tendon. It strengthens yang energy of the kidneys, generates warmth and alleviates lower back pain. This point is recommended for people who often get cold feet and long for warmer climates. It's especially effective when treated with moxa. For more information about this, take a look at the additional materials. The stomach 41 point is on the top side of the foot, close to the ankle and in the depression between the tendons. Massaging this point alleviates pain in the ankles and helps with headaches and facial disorders. The bladder 60 point is located exactly opposite the kidney 3 point, on the outer side of the leg between the top of the ankle and the Achilles tendon. Use it to treat sprained ankles and pain in the lower part of the spine. The Chinese call this point High Mountain. After walking for a long time, grasp both the Kidney 3 and Bladder 60 to bring a sensation of relief and relaxation to the legs. This will renew your will to continue walking. Directly below the bladder 60 point, on the edge of the foot where the red and the white skin meet, lies the best calming point on the leg, similar to the heart 7 point on the wrist. Grasp the outer edge of the foot to positively affect the gallbladder and bladder. Massage the foot from the heel towards the toes along the paths of the meridians. Massage the big toe to alleviate headaches, migraines and hypertension. Massage the second toe to ease headaches. Massage the third toe to treat ear inflammation. Massage the fourth toe to treat skin and eczema. Massage the fifth toe to help correct the position of the fetus and treat urinary problems. Massaging the heel is very effective against sciatic pain. Massaging the inner edge of the foot alleviates problems associated with the spine.
The Apollo massage is performed with the back of the fist. Press and slowly move forward. Apollo is quite a deep motion which strengthens all of the organs. Spreading the muscles from the middle outwards is very pleasing for feet which have been squeezed into shoes all day. Hold one toe at a time, make a few circular movements and finally pull. Stretch the entire upper and lower muscles of the foot by grasping the toes and bending them all at once, first one way and then the other. Rotating removes blocks in the ankle, enabling the blood and energy to flow freely upwards. Tiger's paw or knocking with the fingertips and nails increases the circulation of the foot. Beat all over the foot with the hand. The effect is similar to the previous exercise. It increases circulation and strengthens muscles. Finish by thoroughly washing the feet. The legs. Start the leg massage at the ankle using upward movements with the goal of increasing vital energy. As with the arm massage, use various techniques such as rubbing with the thumb, rubbing with the palm, and ironing. Massage the inner side of the leg along the spleen meridian. This is where the important spleen 6 and spleen 9 points lie. The first is just above the ankle and the second just below the knee. Their precise location isn't important. Wide-ranging movements like these are bound to include them. These two points are excellent for stimulating sexual energy. They can also be used to treat diarrhea, bleeding, insomnia, tiredness in the legs, and irregular menstrual cycles. Take note, these points shouldn't be massaged during pregnancy. Rub the outer front side of the leg along the stomach meridian. This includes the important stomach 36 and stomach 40 points. The first point is just under the knee and the second halfway between the knee and the ankle. These two points strengthen the immune system stimulate the kidneys and regulate the stomach and spleen as well as the digestive system. The stomach 36 point is the best tonic point in the body. Stimulating this point produces effects which are similar to doping yet totally natural. The stomach 40 point stimulates coughing. Grasp the calf along the bladder meridian. This is beneficial to the lower back and to the calf muscles, which are three times stronger than the front muscles of the lower leg.
there are acupressure points, spleen 10 and stomach 34 points above the knee. Press and make small circles. The points are used against itching and allergies and to treat pains in the knees and stomach. It's time to move on to the thighs, still massaging along the stomach and spleen meridians. Use similar techniques to the ones used below the knee. Rubbing with the palm. Rubbing with the thumb. and ironing. Grasp the thighs with both hands. The pressure is strong and deep. Massaging here treats sciatica and lumbago and strengthens the thigh muscles. Time to add a new technique called open rolling. Lay the fist on your thigh and quickly open it as if to say, give me money. Continue closing and opening the fist while moving slowly along the thigh. Apply pressure with the back of the hand. Open rolling strengthens the quadriceps muscle. Conclude the self-massage of the legs by standing up and rubbing the inner side of the thighs where the liver meridian runs. Massaging here strengthens the tendons and ligaments and removes obstructions of blood and energy flow from the legs to abdomen and vice versa. Finish the self-massage by slapping the whole body in order to thoroughly relax and warm the muscles and to increase circulation. Try this to see how much it pleases the body. Now let's review the main benefits of self-massage. Self-massage is simple and effective. Self-massage is preventative and therapeutic. It stimulates the immune system and is appropriate for people of all ages. Self-massage prolongs life. Self-massage is easy to master and doesn't take much time, but it does require a certain discipline. Some exercises have immediate effects, while others do need time. Self-massage can be used anywhere and anytime. All you need is a comfortable place to relax and focus on carrying out correct massage movements. This video frequently mentions acupressure points and meridians. If you would like to know more, watch the additional materials on acupressure. For complete information, including detailed drawings, visit our website at www.holomedica.com. Self-massage is so beneficial that your body will be incredibly grateful. Good luck and take good care of yourself.